The Teachings of the Bhagavad Gita Chapter 7, Self-Knowledge and Enlightenment In this chapter, Lord Krishna introduces the concept of divine knowledge and the different ways through which humans perceive and approach the divine. He explains that everything in the universe is a manifestation of his divine energy and that understanding this principle leads to self-knowledge. Krishna describes four types of devotees, those who seek material gains, those who seek knowledge, those who are devoted to the divine in times of distress, and those who are established in true wisdom. He emphasizes that the last type, the ones who recognize the divine presence in all aspects of life, are the highest. The chapter focuses on the importance of surrendering to divine wisdom and recognizing the all-pervading nature of God. From Chapter 7 of the text you mentioned, Bhagavad Gita, one can learn several important lessons. One concept of divine knowledge, Lord Krishna introduces the idea of divine knowledge, emphasizing that understanding the universe as a manifestation of divine energy can lead to self-knowledge. 2. Perception of the Divine, the chapter discusses different ways humans perceive and approach the divine, which can vary from seeking material gains to seeking knowledge, finding solace in times of distress, or being established in true wisdom. 3. Hierarchy of Devotees Krishna classifies devotees into four types based on their motivations and understanding of the divine. Those who recognize the divine presence in all aspects of life are considered the highest. 4. All-pervading nature of God the chapter highlights the importance of recognizing the divine energy's presence in every aspect of existence, underscoring the idea that everything in the universe is a manifestation of this divine energy. 5. Surrender and Wisdom Krishna emphasizes the significance of surrendering to divine wisdom. By doing so, individuals can attain self-realization and better understand the nature of God and the universe. Overall, the chapter underscores the value of perceiving the divine in all things, surrendering to higher wisdom, and striving for self-knowledge through understanding the interconnectedness of all existence. Chapter 8, Attaining the Ultimate Krishna begins this chapter by explaining how to attain liberation at the time of death. He introduces the concept of the eternal and temporal aspects of reality. He describes different paths that one can follow in their final moments to reach various destinations after death. Krishna explains that the ultimate goal is to attain his divine nature by focusing the mind on him with unwavering devotion. He describes the cosmic order and the cyclical nature of creation and dissolution. Krishna clarifies that the key to liberation lies in seeking refuge in him, practicing detachment, and having a mind fixed on divine thoughts at the time of death. From Chapter 8 of the Bhagavad Gita, you can learn about several important concepts. 1. Attaining Liberation The chapter discusses how to achieve liberation, which is liberation from the cycle of birth and death, samsara. It emphasizes the importance of focusing the mind on divine thoughts at the time of death to attain spiritual freedom. Two eternal and temporal aspects, Krishna introduces the idea of two aspects of reality, the eternal and the temporal. This distinction helps in understanding the impermanent nature of the material world and the unchanging nature of the divine. Three paths to different destinations, Krishna explains that individuals can follow different paths based on their beliefs and actions in life. These paths lead to different destinations after death, reflecting various aspects of their spiritual journey. For unwavering devotion, Krishna highlights the significance of unwavering devotion to achieve the ultimate goal, which is to attain his divine nature. This devotion involves focusing the mind solely on him, leading to spiritual realization. 5. Cosmic Order and Creation the chapter delves into the cyclical nature of creation and dissolution in the cosmic order. This understanding offers insights into the larger cosmic processes and the transient nature of the material world. 
6. Refuge, Detachment, and Divine Thoughts, Krishna emphasizes seeking refuge in Him as a key to liberation. Additionally, practicing detachment from worldly desires and maintaining a mind fixed on divine thoughts during the transition of death are essential aspects of the spiritual path. In summary, this chapter provides guidance on achieving liberation through unwavering devotion, understanding the eternal and temporal aspects of reality, choosing the right path, and maintaining the right mindset at the time of death. Chapter 9, Path of Devotion Krishna reveals the most profound secrets of spiritual knowledge to Arjuna in this chapter. He explains that the entire universe is sustained by his divine energy and that everything exists within him. He introduces the concept of Bhakti Yoga, the path of devotion, as the most accessible and direct way to attain realization. Krishna emphasizes the significance of surrendering all actions and thoughts to him, cultivating unwavering devotion, and dedicating all aspects of life to divine worship. He assures that even those with lower qualities can attain liberation through sincere devotion. Krishna describes the characteristics of true devotees and the rewards of walking the path of devotion. These chapters delve into the themes of divine knowledge, paths to liberation, and the significance of unwavering devotion. They emphasize the all-encompassing presence of the divine and provide insights into how to establish a strong connection with the divine through knowledge, devotion, and surrender. From Chapter 9 of the Bhagavad Gita, you can learn about the profound secrets of spiritual knowledge shared by Krishna to Arjuna. The key teachings include the concept of Bhakti Yoga, the path of devotion, as a direct way to realization. Krishna emphasizes surrendering actions and thoughts, cultivating unwavering devotion, and dedicating all aspects of life to divine worship. The chapter highlights that even those with lower qualities can attain liberation through sincere devotion, describing the characteristics of true devotees and the rewards of this path. The themes explored include divine knowledge, paths to liberation, and the significance of unwavering devotion, emphasizing a strong connection with the divine through knowledge, devotion, and surrender. Chapter 10, Divine Glories In this chapter, Lord Krishna reveals his divine manifestations and glories to Arjuna. He describes his presence in various aspects of creation, including the powerful forces of nature, the qualities of living beings, and the abilities of humans. Krishna elucidates how everything that is great, powerful, or beautiful is a manifestation of his divine energy. He emphasizes that he is the source of all beings and that understanding his divine manifestations leads to spiritual wisdom. The chapter serves to deepen Arjuna's understanding of the cosmic nature of Krishna and the interplay between the divine and the worldly. From Chapter 10 of the Bhagavad Gita, we can learn about Lord Krishna's divine manifestations and glories. This chapter highlights Krishna's presence in various aspects of creation, from nature's forces to human abilities. It underscores the idea that everything great or beautiful is a manifestation of Krishna's divine energy. The chapter also emphasizes that comprehending these manifestations leads to spiritual wisdom, deepening Arjuna's understanding of Krishna's cosmic nature and the connection between the divine and the worldly.